Okay, so over the last, um, during the last video, we learnt how to factorise a polynomial, well, factorise a cubic. Factorising a quartic is the same as factorising a cubic, except that you have to just do the process twice. So let's say, for example, you have a quartic function, whatever it is, you use the factor theorem to find one factor, whatever that is, you then do your division, Um, and when you do the division, you'll get a cubic. And so then at that point, what you then learn is your polynomial is a linear factor, whatever it is, um, times a cubic factor. And then you need to factorise the cubic. So you do the whole process again, factor theorem, do a division. So um, you've got all the techniques now you, that you now need to factorise any polynomial, degree three or higher. Um, but it's just becomes, if you've got a degree four polynomial, you're going to need to do the whole process twice. If you've got a degree five polynomial, you're going to need to do the long division three times, potentially. So it doesn't get harder, it just gets more tedious. Okay, so we'll really just focus on cubics, um, maybe the occasional quartic, um, but just to be clear, so we have learnt how to factorise a polynomial, but we're just going to really keep it focused on cubics for now. So solving polynomial equations, so again, probably mostly focused on cubics, a couple of quartics, but we won't really extend too far beyond that at this point. So um, a quadratic equation is a polynomial equation, and many of the techniques that we use for solving quadratics can be extended to polynomials. So remember our first step when we're trying to solve a, a quadratic equation um, is that if we have only one instance of the unknown, we can solve it by rearrangement. So we don't want to expand out any brackets if we can instead get x on its own by doing the same thing to both sides of the equation. Okay. So if we can solve by rearrangement, we want to do that. Then when we're solving quadratics, if we can't solve it by rearrangement, um, we then try to use the null factor law. So we make one side zero, we factorise the other side and we use the null factor law to solve. Okay. So the null factor law extends out to, so we've seen the null factor law in the context of quadratics. We know that if x minus a times x minus b is equal to zero, that means that x minus a is equal to zero or x minus b is equal to zero, which gives us x equals a or x equals b. That would extend out too if we had a third bracket. The only way three things multiply together is if at least one of those three things is equal to zero. Okay, so sorry, x equals c. So um, as long as we can factorise whether there's what, two, three, four, ten brackets, then we can use the null factor law to solve. Okay. Um, all right, so we want to, if we can solve by rearrangement, we will. If not, we'll um, factorise and use the null factor law. Now, when we work with quadratics, we then, if we can't factorise, we then also have the tools of completing the square and the quadratic formula available to us. Um, but these, those techniques don't extend to higher degree polynomials. So for now, um, when we're being asked to solve cubics or above, they will either be able to, they will be able to be solved with either of these methods. There are going to be cubics that can't be solved with these methods, um, but we are not going to go to that point. Okay, solve each of the following equations for x. Okay, so if we can solve by rearranging, we will. Um, we can't here, there's more than one instance of x. If we were to expand all this out, there would be more than one term involving x that aren't like terms. We then want to think about using the null factor law. The null factor law requires that we make one side equal to zero, which is already done, and that we factorise the other side, which is already done. So this is nice and easy. We're immediately in a position to use the null factor law. If these three brackets multiply together to give zero, it must mean that either this bracket equals zero, or this bracket equals zero, or this bracket equals zero. And from that, we can see that x equals three is a, is a solution, two x equals negative one, so x equals negative one half is a solution, or x equals negative eight is a solution. So three possible solutions to the equation. Okay, question two, again, can't solve it by rearrangement, so we wanna try and use the null factor law. We've already got the null, aspect of the null factor law and we've already got the factor aspect. The left hand side is already factorised. So again immediately this means that either x has to equal zero or x squared minus five has to equal zero which would mean x squared equals five which would mean x equals positive or negative square root of five. So we've got three solutions zero, positive root five, negative root five. Okay, question three. Now question three, we've just got one x in the equation. So we should be able to do the same thing to both sides until we get x on its own. We can solve it by rearranging. So we're going to subtract 16 from both sides. We 
going to divide by 2, x minus 5, sorry, equals negative 8. And then we're going to take the cube root. Now we can take the cube root of a negative because remember if we have um, you know, a negative times a negative times a negative, we get, still get a negative. So negative 1 all cubed is negative 1, which means we can take the cube root of negative 1 would be negative 1. Okay. Similarly, negative 2 all cubed is negative 8, which means that the cube root of negative 8 is negative 2, which is exactly what we're going to need here. So you won't get a plus minus when you're taking the cube root. If you're cube rooting a negative value, it will be a negative answer. If you're cube rooting a positive value, it will be a positive answer. It won't be, you won't be both positive and negative, or won't be solutions when you're cubing and cube rooting. Okay, so x minus 5 is the cube root of negative 8, which is negative 2. Alright, and so, sorry, don't need those brackets there. And so x is going to be negative 2 plus 5, which is 3. So just the one solution to that cubic. So cubic equations, we can have zero, no, we can't have zero solutions. There'll always be at least one solution, but we can have one, two, or three solutions. We'll talk more about that when we see the graphs a bit later on. Okay, question four. Can we solve by rearrangement to get x on its own? Um, not without dividing by x, and dividing by x is a big no-no when we're solving. So um, we're going to focus on null factor law. So let's make one side zero. Then let's factorise the other side. So there's a nice common factor of x squared there. Let's take that out. x squared times x minus 7. Okay, so now we've factorised. So either x squared is equal to 0, which means x is equal to 0, or x minus 7 is equal to 0, which means x is equal to 7. Okay, question 5. Again, we've got three terms involving x, so can't solve by rearrangement. Let's try making one side 0 so we can use our null factor law. So 6x cubed plus 13x squared minus 5x equals 0. Okay, so now we want to try factorising the left-hand side. It's a nice common factor of x there. Let's take that out. So we've got 6x squared plus 13x minus 5. Okay, quadratic to factorise. Harder quadratic. So factors of negative 30 that add up to positive 13. Uh, it's going to be negative 15 and positive 2. No, positive 15 and negative 2. So it's going to be x. I'm going to write it as 6x squared. I'm going to write minus 2x and then plus 15x. All right, then we factorise by grouping. So 2x is a common factor. And 5 is a common factor. Oh, sorry. Didn't factor out the 2x correctly. So 2x is a common factor, leaving 3x minus 1. And 5 is a common factor, leaving 3x minus 1. Good. Okay, so we're going to have x times 3x minus 1 times 2x plus 5 equals 0. And so that means either x equals 0 or 3x minus 1 equals 0 or 2x plus 5 equals 0. Okay, so that means we're going to have x equals 0 it'll be 3x equals 1, so x equals 1 third, and the other one will be 2x equals negative 5, so x equals negative 5 on 2. So there's your three solutions. Sorry, just finishing that off up there. Okay, uh, final example, I think, question 6, yeah. So um, can't solve by rearrangement because we've got three different x terms that aren't like terms, so more than one x in the equation. We then want to try and use the null factor law. So make one side zero, we want to factorise the other side. No common factors in the left hand side, and so we're factorising a cubic, we're going to need to use our lengthy process. There's no shortcutting it, okay? You just have to be able to do it. Alright, so we want to first of all try and identify one factor. So I'm going to try p of 1 is 1 plus 5 minus 1 minus 5. Good, that's zero. So that means x minus 1 is a factor. So I'm then going to divide x minus 1 into my polynomial. Okay, fact, uh, what do we multiply x by to get x cubed? x squared. Multiplying that, x squared minus, sorry, x cubed minus x squared. Subtracting, so 5x squared minus minus x squared is 6x squared. Take away x. What do we multiply x by to get 6x squared? Plus 6x. Multiply. 6x squared minus 6x and subtract. 
negative x minus minus 6x is negative x plus 6x, so 5x. And then we bring down our final term. What do we multiply x by to get 5x? That's plus 5. Multiplying 5 by x minus 1, good. We get a remainder of 0, which is what we expected. Okay, so now what we know is that p of x is equal to x minus 1 times x squared plus 6x plus 5. Okay, And remember, we're solving p of x equals 0, so solving that equal to 0. So we've got x minus 1. We factorise this, factors of positive 5 that add up to positive 6. So that's x plus 2, sorry, x plus 5, x plus 1. Okay, And now we're solving that equal to 0, which means we can use our null factor law now that we've factorised. So x minus 1 equals 0, so x equals 1. x plus 5 equals 0, so x equals negative 5. And x plus 1 equals 0, so x equals negative 1. I want you to be cautious. Sometimes people get themselves, they sort of get very excited once they've factorised and then automatically write down their answers Okay, at the end here. Now we're only getting answers because the polynomial is equal to 0. If the question is just factorise the polynomial, you don't get any solutions. Okay, It's only because you have an equation to solve and then at the end once we factorise we can then use our null factor law to solve because we're equal to zero. This is what's important. Please don't omit writing that. If you're solving an equation, the only way you can solve it is if you actually have an equation. So it needs to be, an, it needs to be equal something, equal to something to then solve it. Okay, again, um, work today is from a worksheet, um, some practice solving cubic equations.